Hello. In this lecture, we will talk about how to handle state in Haskell, and I have prepared a couple of um, couple of items. So first, uh, project setup. So we will be using IntelliJ, and I have a standard IntelliJ setup here uh, with stack. Um, I have removed the change log, so I don't need that, and. In the main, we will be processing uh, the input um, using the interact function. So we need effectively a function which will generate a string, right? So the, the function which consumes a string and um, produces a string. So we have a process line uh, function and it will, it is, the, the stuff is implemented in the library. So we have this uh, function here. So we will take the input uh, and we will produce uh, string output. So there is no uh, no magic here. What we can do, we can test our setup by saying um, hello world. And then I will be using um, stack GHCI to interact with my, with my implementation such that I can uh, quickly test uh, process line something and it produces hello world. So my process line function is exported, it's visible and currently it does nothing. You've noticed that if you run uh, GHCI you have this uh, warning here which is a little bit uh, annoying. So what I've done I kind of researched why there is this warning and it turns out that, um, so jumping through various options, uh, people complaining about this as well. So the bottom line is um, you have to add this to your stack YAML. Actually, not stack YAML, you have to add it to your package YAML. And because we're doing it for the executable, you have to add it here. And you have to make sure that it's properly aligned. And you replace package with your um, RPM calc in our case. So that should do it. So if I update it, it will update the Kabul file. And once it's done. Let's recheck it. So I will quit that. And well, we still have it. What went wrong? It's still doing the generation of the cover file. So let's quit. Let's wait. Okay, well, yeah, so it finished. Perfect. So let's test this. Oh, come on. Um, right, so I, I miss, miss wrote the, the, um, the package. So it is actually called like this. So unfortunately, we have to redo it. Okay. Right, so maybe it is done. It is now working. Yes, it is working. We don't have the annoying warnings and we back in our um, interpreter. So we can test our functions. So to play with the implementations first, let's um, Let's try to implement uh, the logic for the calculator again, such that we will um, process the, um, the simple um, operations like multiplication and 
and addition. So we will be operating on floats such that we would like to be able to type op operations like this and the interpreter will be uh, going from left to right and when it uh, finds a number it will add it to our working stack and then when it finds the operation it will try to do this operation on the values of the of which are already on the stack. Um, we may have um, an error so in, in such a case we may have um, not a number on the stack but a maybe number right so our our stack uh, will be composed of um, so if, if we don't handle our errors and we crash the program then we would just have numbers so we would have numbers like this right in in our list which, which represents our stack but because we want to potentially handle er er errors we will have just two and just three and potentially we can have nothing right so if um, parsing of a particular token failed then we may end up having nothing in our in our list and then we will tell the user that uh, something went wrong so uh, this is effectively uh, maybe float so we will have a list of maybe floats and then uh, when we processing so this is our working working stack and when we processing the input so th this is um, this is the input and we will uh, parse right, come on. we will pass it um, to our function which will uh, process the input token by token and we will use words for it right so we will use words for the input and then we will have uh, individual then we will have individual tokens like this and then we have to do something with the tokens so that's what we need a function for so we need a function for process token which will um, take our current uh, maybe float stack it will take a word so it will take a string uh, from our uh, so it will probably you know it can be given this and then subsequently this and so on uh, and it will produce a new version of the maybe float uh, stack so if, if everything is correct then we will get just two followed by just three and then for this operation the process token will actually execute the logic and it will consume those two from the stack and produce six into the um, output um, stack such that we should get at the end just six uh, if something goes wrong somewhere along the line um, at some point we may get nothing so you know we may get nothing or we may get uh, some problems so for example if this is a function fun which the program doesn't know what to do then we may end up having just two uh, just three and then nothing uh, as indicating that there is an error right so if we try to implement our process token now we have a um, couple of situations one situation is that we are processing the operation so for processing the operation we expect to have a, uh, a certain uh, elements on the stack already such that we expect to have two values followed by the rest of the of the uh, of the stack Right, so um, we we adding items to the stack from the head, such that the, the very first item, which is so here, I, I kind of wrote wrong because uh, if we think how the stack works, then two is first, then we have three, just three, and then we have something put on top of the stack. So the top of the stack is on the left hand side of our list, which is a little bit. Uh, potentially confusing but this is the top of the stack this is the uh, the second element of the stack 
and then um, we have the, the, the rest of the tokens. So top of the stack, second element of the stack, and the rest. And then if um, we get, so we we expecting a list and we expecting some sort of word, so some, some token, right? So um, if the token is multiplication, so if the token is multiplication, we're gonna return um, a new list uh, where we have consumed the first two elements and then we basically multiply them. Um, so normally what we could do is we could say, okay, A multiplied by B and then concatenate it with the rest of the list. And that would work if our list was of floats, right? Because then we can multiply A with B and get a result. But because we're operating on maybe floats, that is not going to work. Um, we have to do a little bit of uh, applicative magic. So the simplest way to do that is to apply addition. Uh, multiplication, I mean, is to apply multiplication to the first argument and then uh, apply the result to the second argument and then we will get a final outcome and then we concatenate it with the, um, with the rest of the list. So if we put the brackets correctly, uh, we now do A times B but through the applicative syntax such that we can work with the just values, right? So let's do the process token. Let's do the same for addition. So if we do the same for addition, we're gonna get the same pattern such that instead of multiplying now, we're gonna do addition. You can do subtraction and um, division and other other items, uh, other other operations that you want to do on um, on your you know elements of the stack. If you have functions which only take one element, you can replace this pattern with just a head, um, because that you know you will be consuming just the first element. Okay, so um, yeah, so it complains about non-exhaustive pattern matching. So now we um, we finish with our with our functions. So uh, we, we kind of stopped parsing the functions. Now we're gonna get uh, some um, some token, right? So if we if we're gonna get a, a token um, which is a number in our case because we expect some operations and then some numbers. Um, then we have to say process token and then the first element is our our stack so let's say we have the stack and the second element is the some sort of text so um, if we say token so the first element is anything that didn't match before and now it will match here and then the second argument is whatever didn't match before and we will have it here. Okay, so here we have um, a situation where we're gonna parse this token as a number because if we don't have a, any known function, then we will try to treat it as a number. So we kind of expect for the well-formed program to be of the form, you know, some numbers and then some operations that we know about so we can uh, try to parse it as a, as a number. So we can say read maybe, and then we parse the token. And this is of type maybe float. So let's see where I need to have brackets. Right, so uh, read maybe yes, I need to import it. So import um, read maybe. And now, yeah, so it 
gives us the um, the value, and we basically need to concatenate it with the uh, with the stack. So we will put the new value on top of the stack, and if the new value is um, if, if, if it's nothing, then we're gonna get nothing on the stack, right? So this is what I said about the, the just, um, just maybe. So uh, let's, let's test it, uh, what it complains about. Um, process token, process token. Oh yeah, because we're not using it yet, yeah, all right. So it's all good, uh, let's test this. So let's reload it and then process token and we need to pass it the current stack. So if I pass it just to just, uh, let's, let's pass it just with just two and then we need to um, pass it the token. So if I pass it three, um, yeah, process token is not exported. Let's export this process token. What do you want? Redundant back brackets. We don't need extra brackets. Perfect. So reload. All right. So as expected, uh, three goes on the top of the stack. So I have just two and then just three gets into the top of the stack. What if I say, if I already have uh, just two and just three, and I will do a plus. Perfect, so the two elements get consumed, and then a plus is applied, and the result gets into the into the into our working stack. So that, that works great. Um, what happens if we try to do plus, but we only have one element? Then we get nothing, okay? So we get nothing on top of the stack. Um, and just to kind of state, it hasn't been consumed because this function uh, cannot execute because it's missing some operands. Therefore, it, um, it didn't work. All right. so. Um, there is one extra thing that we would like to do, which is uh, we would like to be able to process the entire line. And to process the entire line, uh, we need to map. Um, so if, if we have the string as a, the, the line as an input, we need to do words on this line. And then uh, we need to apply, we need to map process token for all the elements of the of the um, uh, of the list that words will give us so we will do uh, yeah we could use fold as well uh, but let's just do the the map and then that will produce um, a, a new list uh, and then we will map um, show to this new list and the mapping of show will produce words and we just say onwards to uh, to produce a single uh, string so what that works mm, yeah that's right so that works but we need to pass um, the initial um, value for yeah, so that, that will not work too well because um, we will be um, always processing the, the given token with an empty, um, yeah, so we really need to do a fold. So we need to fold left and we're gonna fold uh, with this, with this function and this initial list. All right, so let's check this out. Um, process line is exported, so let's reload this. And then if I say process line, and now we have two, three. 
just two, just three as strings. Perfect. So that works worked pretty well. How about two, three, multiply? That worked as expected as well. What if we do the plus? We don't have division yet. Uh, plus, plus works. What if we try to do additional plus on five, on top of five? We should get five nothing. Oh, not, nothing five. So top of the stack on the left. Perfect. So that works great. Um, so our implementation works and it handles error by telling us that there is nothing on top of the stack, right? So if I have some problems, so for example, if I have um, process line and I have some legitimate operations, so let's say I have this, and then I, I do plus, so then three plus four is seven, um, and then I will end up with two and seven on top of the stack. If I multiply those two numbers, I will have seven times two, I will have 14. And then if I say A, which is an error, uh, because we don't know what, what A does, I will should I should end up with nothing on top of the stack, which indicates that the program failed. And then 21, which is for all the correct operations that I already had, right? Um, if I continue having errors, so if I say um, A, 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 I have multiple errors, I'm gonna get multiple errors on, on the stack because it's like the process token will say, oh yeah, uh, I have an error, put it on to top, top of the stack. I have another error, another error, another error. And then if I have plus, that will be an error. Um, so let's have a single error and plus, and that will be, um, and so that's interesting. Why we lost 14? Um, so that, is a little bit interesting. Yeah, I don't really know why we, we lost 14, but we should have um, we should have nothing for this and then nothing for this because this one cannot do the, the, the plus because we only have we, we have nothing and um, I yeah I know what happened. So okay so what happened here is if I have if I have uh, an error which is nothing followed by just two, and I try to do the plus operation, um, I, I actually match our applicative um, applicative matcher, right? So I, I have nothing with just two, and then I'm trying to do this uh, application of nothing with something else. And of course that will produce nothing. So it will consume those two tokens, but as a result, it will produce nothing from this operation, right? So sometimes you can consume an, an error and then compact it because when we um, when we do this um, uh, applicative um, operation on our applicatives and one of them is is um, nothing, then the whole thing collapses to nothing, but they still get consumed, right? So our pattern matched, but the uh, result got consumed. All right, so um, that works. Uh, we have we have this interesting case here where I can have a couple of nothings followed by just two, just three, just four, and then multiplication again. And then I will have on top of the stack, I will have a result, this result, right? Uh, so if I execute this, I have just 12, which is my final operation, which I did here. And this multiplication kind of worked because it consumed the two top elements of the stack. So it kind of produced this uh, just 12, but you know, I have some errors in my program here, which get into this uh, nothingness. Okay, so um, that works and you can expand it with additional functions and you can do division and, and so on. And also what you can do is you can change this to be uh, either and instead of um, either string and float, and then instead of just falling back to the to nothing, what you can do is you can fall back to left 
and then in left you can put a string of what went wrong. So if something goes wrong, then you can um, keep an error saying what went wrong and that will provide a user a little bit more meaningful information that than uh, saying nothing, okay? Another thing that you can do is you can compact um, the list such that if you have at least one nothing, you can produce a nothing nothing result, right? So you can flatten the the list such that it flats uh, it flattens it to um, just values uh, if the if if they are just just values, or it flattens it to nothing if at least one of the elements is nothing. But uh, you, I'm not gonna do that, uh, and I'm not gonna do the the either here neither. But you can uh, you can modify it to um, to host either floats and then if you have an error you can uh, put a string so here for example uh, we cannot uh, like because then we um, so some modifications here would require either string um, either string or float um, this will work the same way so if I have two elements and one of them is left, I'm gonna get left. So it will fall back, again, it will compact the error case situation to just a single error. Um, but this now returns a maybe float and we cannot do that. So we would have to say a case of, and then in the case, um, in the case of nothing, we have to return, um, we have to say uh, left um, error, no, parsing error, parsing error, expected uh, number. And you can even say got, and you can say what, um, you can concatenate it with the, with the token such that uh, it will um, provide the meaningful error message of where you actually failed. And then we concatenate it with the rest of the uh, of our stack. So let's um, put brackets where we need them. Okay, so what do you want? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. because I don't have, um, I'm operating on the entire stack here. So stack, and then um, if I got just number n, I'm gonna return right n, concatenate with stack, okay? Um, couldn't match. Okay, 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 okay. Right, so that works. It can uh, tell me that I can si simplify um, the expression. All right, so we have now a situation where we um, pass um, an error, so the, the parsing error. So if we redo this A thing, okay, we have to reload. So I have now left parsing error expected a number got a symbol A, right? And this, the left contains quotes such that I have quoted quotes um, in, inside left. I can uh, unwrap the, the left and kind of get the, the error. Uh, but, you know, th that was kind of a simple case where I had an error in the first, um, first, um, Symbol, if I have uh, three plus two and then plus, which is missing the uh, additional number, I'm gonna get, um, so parsing error, expected a number, but got plus, right? So here our parser was expecting a number because uh, we only have one element on the stack and we don't have any functions which consume a single element. So uh, it, was expecting a number, but um, 
but got a plus. And then, you know, the, uh, the next element of the stack is write five, which is the outcome of this, of this addition. All right, so that, that works. Um, and we now handle errors with some, a little bit more meaningful uh, situation. And again, if we have, um, so if I have an error and then a, po a normal value, so now I have a, a co correct value, an error, and then this will produce another error. Uh, this plus is gonna compact um, the error and we're gonna just get one single error, right? So we just get one single error now, which says at this point, we were expecting a number, but we got a symbol A. And you know, this plus basically fold, um, kind of compacted the, the errors for us. So we got the first error that we got, and then um, we co kind of consumed it. Okay, so pop will just eat one uh, item from the stack, right? So we're gonna return the rest and we're gonna eat the, the first element from the stack, right? So now we have a function which only expects one single element and this function is called pop. So if we have, um, if we reload this and we say, uh, for example, A, uh, we have an error, parsing error, expected a number got, uh, got symbol A. All right, so anyway, it works, we have a pop, so we can also do, for example, we can do this. So now if we have, which actually leads us to, leads me to the uh, interesting situation, which will be uh, discussed later for the, our interpreter language, uh, what to do with errors, okay? So um, if we have a situation where we have an error uh, on top of the stack, but this error is um, non-blocking in, in a sense like you don't want to panic, you don't want to finish, you can recover and you can carry on. So what would you like to do? Uh, so for example, if I have, um, I could have a program, uh, yeah, again, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but let's say I have some program uh, and I have some operation which uh, potentially can produce an error, right? So what I can do is I can duplicate um, that outcome and then I can do something uh, with this outcome. If that outcome was an error, then I am doing something with it anyway. And then um, I can uh, decide that this error was um, non-blocking. So I can pop uh, the, uh, the duplicated error here. And, I, and here I can carry, all, carry on with my computation as if nothing happened, right? So it, it, it's a, of course, if, um, if do something um, handles the error, uh, then I don't need the duplication, right? So I can actually have this. So do something, potentially knows that there is an error on the stack and it kind of handles it. But let's say that do something if there is an error on the stack just quits, like it, it ignores the errors, right? So then I do dupe, then I do something and then I can uh, pop the error and that error was ignored, but I am ignoring it as well uh, here uh, because I don't care and then I can carry carry over. So the, the pop um, also allows us to eat some values. So for example, if I have um, two, three uh, multiplication, and then I have an error, and then I do pop, then I, I'm gonna get right six because I've eaten up the error, right? So you can yeah, play with this. All right, so the situation here is that we Handling the errors, we have uh, operations which consume just one item and it all works really nice. But what if we would like to handle comments? So what if I would like to be able to say, um, multiply uh, two, um, two by three and then uh, put a comment so let's say I will um, I will use the the string character uh, and end of string character and then here I have I have a comment here and then I so here I have five on the stack I want to ignore everything that happens between the quotes 
and here I want to do 2 and multiply the result. So currently that doesn't work. And I have a lot of errors because I have all those tokens here, which process token is processing, but it should not be processing because I kind of started the comment and it should ignore everything until I change the state. So here I would like to keep track of a state uh, in such a way that when I encounter the, um, the quotes, I have some sort of variable global variable, uh, mutable variable, that becomes true, which means my process tokens is ignoring everything until it hits the second quote, in which case it kind of uh, start processing. So here we would like to handle state. I, I, I need to have some state. I need to have some sort of variable that I can uh, mutate, right? But that's not how Haskell works. So for that, we need, um, kind of a notion of a state. 